Hello, my name is Miss Evans and I work for Chestnut Health Systems in the Prevention Department. Today we are going to be talking about goal setting and effective communication. These are skills that you may have already, but our goal today is to help you improve them so that you can reach bigger and more difficult goals and communicate more effectively. To begin, we are going to start with the goal setting process. There are six total steps in this process, and the first is to name it. You should do this first so that you know what you are working towards and can then do the work to get there. While in this step, you are also going to make sure that your goal meets the four goal naming criteria. The first of those is personal. This just means that any goals you set need to be for you and about you. You cannot set goals for other people because you have no control on whether or not they are going to do the work that is needed in order to achieve that goal. The next is possible, which means that your goal needs to have realistic time limits and keep your strengths in mind. For example, if you want to set a goal about your upcoming math test and math is something that you struggle with, you should make sure that you give yourself more than enough time to study. The next is positive, and that means you should state your goal in a positive way. If you state it in a negative way, such as, I don't want to fail my math test, you are more likely to get stressed and overwhelmed, which makes it more likely that you will not do well on your math test. A better way of stating it would be, I want to get an A on my math test. The last one is specific, meaning that it needs to be measurable. For example, if you stated your goal saying that you wanted to study more, well, the issue with that is that more cannot be measured because it could mean something different to everyone. A better way of stating it would be that you want to study for 30 minutes every day. That can be measured so you will know when you have reached that goal. Once you name your goal and make sure that it meets the four goal naming criteria, you can move on to step two. Step two of the goal setting process is to picture yourself reaching it. Doing this will put you in a positive mindset and encourage you to do the work that is needed to reach your goal. After you picture yourself reaching it, you can move on to step three, which is to say I can. Using positive self-talk such as I can do this will help you stay motivated to complete your goal. Steps two and three kind of go hand in hand but they are important to help you stay positive and motivated throughout the goal setting process. From there, you can move on to step four, which is to think how to do it. This is where you will come up with your plan on how you are going to reach your goal. To do this, you need to consider two things. The first is action steps. These are the smaller tasks or steps that need to be completed so you can reach your goal. For example, if your goal is to get an A on your math test, some action steps might be doing your homework, studying every night, or talking to your teacher. Typically, the larger the goal is, the more action steps that will be needed. Next, you will need to consider some resources. These could be people or things that can help you reach your goal. So for the math test example, some resources could be your teacher, your parents, your textbook, or even a calculator. Anything that you may need or anything that can help you reach your goal can be considered a resource. Once you have developed your plan, you can move on to step five, which is to go for it. Here you will act out your plan and utilize your resources and hopefully reach your goal. If you do not reach your goal in this step, you may need to go back to step four and rethink your plan. If you do reach your goal, you can move on to step six, which is to celebrate your success. This is where you should take a break and reward yourself for all of your hard work. Keep in mind that the reward should be proportional to the goal achieved. So if you got an A on your math test, for example, Maybe your reward is some ice cream or hanging out with your friends on the weekend. 
This is an important step for all goals because if you take the time to reward yourself and have a break, it is easier to stay motivated for those bigger and harder goals in the future. Now that we have gone over the goal setting process, let's talk about effective communication. In any communication scenario, there will always be two roles, the speaker and the listener. The speaker's goal is to give information and the listener's goal is to receive and understand that information. There are also two types of communication, verbal and nonverbal. Verbal communication consists of the words you say, whereas nonverbal communication is made up of everything else. Nonverbals can include facial expressions, body language, and tone of voice. All of these can cause your verbal message to be interpreted in different ways. There are also three speaking styles that all have different characteristics, and they are passive, aggressive, and assertive. The passive speaking style tends to be very shy and quiet. They are also going to be indirect, meaning their message is not going to be clear and concise. And this can cause confusion for the listener. They will usually be unconfident and are going to be overly concerned about the listener's feelings. So much so that they are going to be more concerned about offending the listener than getting their information and message delivered and understood. Next, there is the aggressive speaking style. This one is going to be very confident, but can also be rude and even bossy. They can be disrespectful and aren't going to be very concerned about the listener's feelings. The speaking style tends to be demanding and louder than others. Last, there is the assertive speaking style. This one is going to be confident and straightforward, so they are going to get their message across but they are going to do it in a kind and respectful way that is considerate of the listener's feelings. This speaking style is the best way to communicate information on a daily basis because it clearly gets the message across, but is still respectful of the listener and the listener's feelings. Next, we are going to watch a video that has some really good examples of the three speaking styles and nonverbals. The mom and dad in the video are good examples of assertive speaking style, and Riley shows both the passive and aggressive styles in this clip. Make sure you pay attention to Riley's body language, tone of voice, and facial expressions, and how they change once she starts changing to the aggressive speaking style. Go ahead and press play now to show the video.
We have talked quite a bit about the speaker and their role, so now we are going to switch over to the listener. Active listening is when someone is giving all of their attention and focus to the speaker so that they can be sure they have received all of the information. An active listener is not only going to pay attention to the words the speaker is saying, they are also going to pay attention to their nonverbal cues as well. They are also going to show the speaker they are listening by making eye contact and having attentive posture, meaning they're going to be nodding their head, leaning in, not looking at their phone, etc. They are also going to ask clarifying questions to get more information, which shows the speaker that they were listening and interested in what the speaker was saying. Active listening and assertive speaking are both essential skills for someone to have to be an effective communicator. An individual has to be able to function in both the speaker and listening roles in order to effectively communicate. Thank you for listening and a special thank you to the Mendez Foundation and the Too Good for Drugs program as this is where all of the information came from that we heard today. If your teacher would like you to complete the activity for this lesson, please continue to the following slides. Make sure you answer the correct questions for your grade level. Thank you for listening and I hope you are all staying healthy and safe.